So I want to talk about Perplexity's uh, more recent feature, Pages, which actually, if you have a basic account, you can still use and create pages. And you just have to go to perplexity.ai slash page, forward slash page, and it will bring you to exactly what you see here, which is a draft page ready to go. Uh, for education, I think this has some really interesting potential, and also it's, it's still in a very early stage. So I'm curious where it goes next. Um, but I want to talk about it because I think there's some cool things here to think about and how we like step into a topic and then how we explore it. And I think that's something uh, perplexity might might be able to do really well, even though this is an early stage product. I think about next generation of this in how we might have more control in, in some of this will be really cool. So you're going to come here and the first thing it's going to want you to know, want to know is like what your page is about. So I'm going to choose something that's really nerdy for me because it's a topic I really enjoy. And I am going to talk about academic audio books. This is a topic I probably know way too much about and I'm just curious how it's going to create this as a collection. So a couple of things you'll notice it does right away is first it just pulls an image this image I'm not that impressed with, but whatever, it's still calculating, it's still creating. Over on the right here, it creates our little ongoing outline. It provides us with this very brief description, and then it gets into uh, several other things in here, not all of which really have to do with audiobook, academic audiobooks, but that's fine. So let's do a couple things here. I'm going to do edit to kind of show a couple things here. First, I want to think about what sources do I want to emphasize. And when I sell, or sorry, not what sources, but when I select emphasize sources, it's going to mean it's going to show the sources at the end, right? So this is making sure that people see where this is pulling from. That's great. Uh, if I want to click on the title here and change the title from academic audiobook sources to more something like, um, we're going to, we're going to call it audiobook, uh, academic audiobook books 101, right? So by telling it, by naming it that, it might help to reconceive exactly what things are. And again, with this particular description, I am going to just rewrite the intro. And so once again, it's going to recalculate that. Now, other things I can do here, um, I can scroll down and start to play with individual sections. I can insert a section or I can change a section. So if I click on this and I decide to rewrite section on save, so that means once I hit save, it's going to recreate the section. I'm going to say uh, different publishers that publish uh, publish academic audiobooks. And there's nothing particular specific about academic audiobooks. They're just audio audiobooks that are from more academic presses. So there's not like a, we're not missing things here, uh, or you're not missing things here if you're like, wait, I don't know what that is. Um, but notice that it, I do notice, you know, this, it is pretty focused on university press audiobooks. So if I want to change that, I actually come down to the sources and I can decide, nope, uh, I want you to, I want new sources. So I'm going to select the three that you have and I'm going to remove them. And in doing that, it's now going to try to recreate a new description. Uh, and it's getting there. So, right, it's saying University Press Audiobook stands out as the most likely one, but then there's other notable ones. So, once again, let's look at the resources, see what it has. Again, I'm going to kick out University, uh, that, that particular one. I'm going to also remove Audible and see where else it draws things from. So now it's only going with two sources. It doesn't necessarily seem like it's, it's added a lot. So again, I can kind of play around here with some other things. I can decide I don't want it concise, but I want it detailed. And I could I could do media or media and text or media only. I'm going to stick with just text for now. And now it's going to regenerate that description and provide some more details. Okay. 
And then we get into innovative audiobook formats. Again, I'm interested, where are you pulling your sources from? So Forbes and uh, that first one. So I'm gonna, I am going to actually do an edit here. I'm gonna want it to be more detailed and see if it pulls any more sources in doing that. So, yep, we see it's it's getting a couple more sources. It's jumping into a couple different areas, right? So, and it also renamed it into innovative audiobook formats. Okay, that could be cool. And then down below, it has a piece on accessibility. Once again, I would be curious to look at where it's pulling from. And um, I, might, I might decide to jettison these just to see what it comes up with again. Now we're getting into three or four sources. Again, I can look at those. So I think it's, you know, I think that, like I said, there's something interesting here about being able to build these things out and it comes with its citations, right? It's, it's pulling on its sources. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued, right? I think there's some potential things to be, to be done here. I also can change the header. So if I don't like that image, in fact, um, I can, uh, I can come up and edit that over here where I can change. Unfortunately, it pulls uh, some images, none of which are really that great. Although I might grab this one and put this one in here. And then I might decide to change its position to something like, uh, maybe something like that. Sure. I can also delete it or I can just have no image up there. And then I can continue to, I can add media in particular sections, or I can add an entirely new section, right? So maybe down here, um, it's, what do, uh, maybe it's, um, I'm just going to call it scholars and audiobooks and see what it decides to produce. Once again, I'm going to do detailed and I'm going to throw in some media there. Let's, let's spin the wheels, see what it comes up with. And notice also down here, it gives me some suggested ones if I was interested. So now it's creating this section and the, it's decided scholars embrace audio learning. Um, of course, you know, this is one of the things, notice that it starts to pull from certain sources that are a little bit more uh, um, commercial than useful. And so this is a thing, of course, we have to navigate, we have to be aware of, right? So again, we can look at those resources, dig pull from Eric, um, but you know, some of these places feel, uh, yeah, as I said, some things look a little bit more commercial than uh, useful information resources. All right, so say I do all of this, say this is good to go, um, I can preview it. So I can click on that preview. And it's going to show me, again, how it shows up to the a typical person that would come to this page. And this is where it's really cool. This is where I talk about that like possibility for learning, that possibility for exploration is at the bottom, it has, of course, related questions you can ask and questions that you can ask as a follow-up. And I think this is the the interesting thing of like, man, what if you create a general, like a intro to a topic in the student's homework is actually to have a conversation to like follow their curiosity around the subject connect the subject with something else really think about like how they might pursue their own learning that still is in relation to the the subject at hand and part of what they submit is the chat log is like the chat log and a reflection on where their learning took place so i think that to me is the cool thing i can say hmm um are there any famous scholars that are big fans of audio if i can spell it audiobooks All right so i'm going to just throw that in there and see what it says Right, because it's building off of this one. So this is this is an interesting response, right? So we went from the question was scholars, and of course the answer was mm, not not so much scholars. So yeah, we we get uh, a philosopher, and then we get John Le Carre and Whoopi Goldberg. Um, that seems 
doesn't seem to align, which is a great thing to to also have a discussion about how it, it came to that answer. But then there's some additional interesting follow-ups, right? Like what famous scholars have publicly endorsed audiobooks? Let's see if we can find that one, find an answer there. And notice it produces some of the, the same answers that it has already. Although it does get into some other things such as scholars highlighting the benefits uh, for accessibility around language learners. And so, okay, there's, there's maybe something a little bit more there. And of course I can view the sources to see, well, where is, where is it drawing from in, in this response? So that is Google, uh, sorry, perplexity pages. It's still new. It's still early. I think there's a lot more that can be done with it. I think there's some interesting things that will come along later. Um, but it's, it's this interesting kernel of an idea that I hope to see more of. All right. Thank you so much for watching.